Hey everybody, Jason here, and welcome to another episode of Driver's Paddock. Today we're at the legendary Canadian Tire Motorsports Park Grand Prix track for event one of Ontario Time Attack. Since the last time you saw the G87 M2, a few things have changed. Today, instead of running 275 square CRS, we are running 305 square CRS. We've also installed Nitron R3 adjustable coilovers. We have taken the rear wing off. I struggled a lot with understeer in the high speed corners, so I think that will help the car rotate. Next, we've actually taken out the Recaro podium seats and put those in my F87, but instead this car has gotten OEM M4 CSL seats. They're gorgeous. There is a lot of fierce competition today. For one, we have Brandon from Grid Engineering in his C5 Corvette. We have Dave in his M4 GT More build. We have Shin in his GT4 RS. Sean in his TTRS, Leo in his TT, we have Christian in a Supra, we have a LS swapped E46 M3, we have Gabe in his E36 M3, with a pair of fast Corvettes, we have a Mustang, and more. Ontario Time Attack is different because there is a performance index that each car is assigned. For example, this car will compete in its class, which is mod open class, but it's still able to stack up against cars like a Gen 1 FRS or an S2000 or any car for that matter. Each car is assigned a value based on its performance index, based on its handling index, based on its power to weight. That goes through a formula for Ontario Time Attack to determine who is the best driver of the day. So let's see if me and the G87 can come out on top and let's hunt for that fastest of the day. Let's go. Not bad for a warm up, not bad at all for a warm up. Still a lot of time to find. Not bad, not bad, not bad at all. Woo! Well, the car is a little bit loose without the wing, but it doesn't understeer as much, which uh, I much prefer. I would much prefer the car rotate and slide around a little bit than understeer. I find understeer more dangerous than oversteer. Turn four, got a little bit sideways, that's okay. Very controllable. Exit of three, I just gotta be a little bit more patient on the throttle. It's definitely sliding, but uh, that's okay, that's okay. We're gonna improve that time, everybody. We're gonna improve.
just finished lunch and it is time for the competition portion of Ontario Time Attack. We finished our two practice sessions, uh, made some damping changes, so here we go. Currently fastest of the day behind uh, Sal and his Radical, uh, sitting first place in class, but I'm about 10th overall right now, so we'll see what we can do. Currently, Sean Ma is first place. Uh, Christian is probably close behind uh, and a lot, a lot, a lot of fast drivers out here. I think Stu is also third right now for the overall. So uh, let's see how we can do. Let's get on track, full send. We have the beautiful track behind me and the conditions are starting to get a little bit better. So I hit fuel cut and uh, I ran the, the fuel uh, just a little bit above quarter tank. And honestly, I thought that would have been okay because at SeaTac we actually ran just above quarter tank and no fuel cut issues. So we did one lap, it was pretty good. Felt really good, started sending it. I actually had 0.5 uh, Delta on the uh, 28.2 that I just did. So definitely into the 27s. Um, yeah, I mean, I just have to, I have to put fuel in the car and just go faster now. So it's starting to cool down. I still haven't beat my time with 275s and uh, stock suspension. So a little bit concerning, but I think we'll find the time. Let's go. So everybody, we just got out of the car and we did my PB of a 127.3 recorded officially on the loop. But unfortunately, I'm sorry guys, I did not turn on my GoPro and the Garmin doesn't have an SC card. So without video, it didn't happen right guys so we have one more at least if not two sessions to go back out there and try to beat that uh, i think i can get into the 126s if i can i'll be super super happy the dampening changes that we did earlier really helped again we stiffened the front rebound and we stiffened the rear compression reason for that is i felt that uh, the car was really oversteering, as you can see in my footage earlier, and the car was also understeering on entry. So stiffening up the front rebound just allows the weight to stay on the front end a little bit longer. The front end doesn't come up as fast, and so I can get the car turned in, and then when I get on power, it's not going to kick out on me. However, right now in the session that I just did, the entry is really, really good actually, uh, but on the a exit, I'm actually starting to understeer now. So actually from the actually from the apex out, I'm starting to understeer, not oversteer. 
And so I am increasing the front rebound just a little bit more, the damping. So when I brake, I can load up the front a little bit more, keep the weight on the front for a longer period of time. Hopefully that just gives me enough time to rotate the car on power and then just point and shoot out. And so here we go, guys. See if we can do a 126. These tires are pretty old. They're on their fifth time attack event. Uh, today is the actually sixth time attack event. And so after today, you know, they're going to be garbage. But, uh, you know, we're well past the wear bar. But send it. Send it. Let's go, guys. Let's see if I can get a 126. Currently uh, fastest production car of the day. Uh, and first in open mod class. Here we go, guys. Full send.
was fun. 127, one new BB. Just shy of that 126. You gotta say something for next time, right guys? Oh my God, that was a lot of fun. So everybody, we finished off with a 127.1, just a 10th off of a 126. So we'll get it next time, guys. Uh, had an absolute blast and our dampening changes actually really helped, right? Uh, Siffing up that front rebound, just kept the weight on the front tires a little bit longer for me to turn and then rotate the car. As you can see, once the front end is loaded up and there's grip, I can then use the throttle to rotate the car. The thing is, if the car is already understeering, if I add throttle, it's going to understeer more and more and more and more. So if that front end is gripped up, I can again, once I put my foot down, the car will yaw, rotate, come around, and I can sort of point and shoot. If I were to have another session, unfortunately, we're done for the day. I would definitely stiffen up the rebound just one more click uh, and then see if I can rotate the car even earlier, get the car pointed in the right direction, just rocket ship out of the corners. The thing is G87 is 3,800 pounds. It doesn't have really good cornering speeds, right? You just have to manage the front end, manage the front end, and then get really, really, really good exits. The thing is, again, if the front end is pushing, you're going to be always delayed on power. So a great day. Let's head over to the podium celebration. And the thing is, OT, there are a few competitions in one. Number one, there is raw time, fastest of the day, your classic time tag. Secondly, there is the PAX or the Performance Index Adjusted Score, uh, and that is across all classes. Next, there is the Rookie Championship. So if it's your first time with OTA, uh, there is a Rookie Championship for you. So it's PAX Adjusted Score uh, for all first season, first timers, and uh, if it's your first season. And lastly, there is the um, team challenge, which is I'm also part of. So myself, Demi, uh, Gabe, and Sean, and Leo are our team today. So hopefully our team came out on top as well. Also one other thing I forgot, there is the Mazda contingency program. So if you drive a Mazda, there's also a, uh, a PAX adjusted competition for you as well with some cash prizes. So let's head over to the podium and uh, let's celebrate a good day. And your top team for the day with a score of 99.941, the propaganda team. Wait, over here? All right, go for it. Wait, 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 wait. Why is everyone running? <laughs> Shin, you gotta go over here! Shin, you gotta go! <laughs> <laughs>